Grace and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think over the years I've gotten better at reading between the lines, looking for the subtext in life's situations, figuring out the verbal and visual clues, trying to understand what is happening behind the scenes of situations. I think that's really important in today's world. After all, context is everything. It's why you can understand people and situations and ideas. For example, if I were to yell out to you, move, you might think that I was rude. But if you and I happen to be standing in the middle of the street and a car is about to hit us, you might be thankful for that. It's all about context. It's the same in our relationships. For example, my wife Linda and I often would say that if we had met earlier in our lives, in our late teen or early 20s, there is no way we would have made a connection. Zero chance. She was a streetwise teen from southeast Queens that when she reflects on the time that she spent with her friends in the schoolyard, she realizes, I think I was a part of a gang. (laughs) And I was a central Pennsylvania preppy nerd. I'm getting better. Being aware of the context is the key to our growth. It helps us in our learning, in our understanding of people and events. We can see that our thoughts and actions can change depending on the situation. And it's not being inconsistent. It's being adaptable to what life is bringing at us. I have a colleague, friend, who is a, was a pastor in New York. He came, uh, he was a pastor in the Missouri Synod Church, a very conservative Lutheran denomination. When his son was 16, he said to his father, Dad, I'm gay. It changed his whole perspective. He was in a denomination, for example, that with that, with knowledge of that, certainly would have kicked his son out of the church and maybe even kicked him out of being a pastor. I was able to help talk to him and lead him into our denomination, and now he serves with distinction, a congregation, a larger congregation in Florida. Context changes everything. While we were in New York, we had friends and neighbors who were Jewish, I also have a friend who happens to be Palestinian. Context changes everything. It helps us get beyond just the mere slogans that we hear shouted out in the streets. And it forces us to dig deeper into those relationships that we have with the people that we love. Awareness over context helps us listen better. It helps us feel empathy for what other people are going through, and maybe even it questions our own assumed beliefs. Being aware of context, we learn that life is complex. Maybe there aren't real simple answers. We learn that we can learn from others. And we can also learn our own limitations, but also capitalize on our strengths. This brings us to Jesus and the Sabbath. 
both Jesus and the Pharisees agreed that the Sabbath should be observed. And in many ways, Jesus was very much like the Pharisees. They were both reformers. They both believed in a strong lay ministry. They had a strong belief in the resurrection. This is probably why there were many Pharisees that ended up becoming followers of Jesus. The problem for Jesus was that the Pharisees were too legalistic in the way they interpreted, irregardless of context in which they found themselves. They were too judgmental. They didn't appreciate the context or extenuating circumstances. It it was all about following the letter of the law for them. And they did so so strictly that Jesus felt that they missed the intent or even misused the law. It was uh, that conflict that we can see between pietistic actions and godly motivations. And for Jesus, it was all about one's heart. And so Jesus criticized, or, or the disciples of Jesus were criticized for breaking the Sabbath by working, in this case, harvesting grain. But here's the thing. None of Jesus' disciples that we know from that time were farmers. They weren't working. Half of them were fishermen. So even in that case, technically, they weren't breaking the Sabbath. Indeed, there was nothing wrong with picking up the gleanings of the grain as you walked through a field on the Sabbath. And then there's the case of the healing the man with the withered hand. The Pharisees answered that whole situation is, why can't you just wait till tomorrow? Tomorrow? Wait for a man who had suffered with a withered hand? No, Jesus says, God's glory will be revealed and the healing mercies of God will not wait for the sun to go down. Not even on the Sabbath. Jesus criticizes their stubbornness of heart. God made the Sabbath to be a blessing to stop you and me from working ourselves to death for us to be able to spend time with God and with our families to rest and to remember. Reading between the lines and understanding context, though, isn't just about getting the whole picture, though. It's about putting yourself in the picture. Putting yourself to the life story of another. Feeling what they feel. Seeking understanding within the context of your relationships. Walking in the other person's shoes. The time is now, especially now, for us to be able to read between the lines, to be more discerning, more informed, whether we're reading or watching the news, engaging in politics, reading scripture, understanding others, talking to your kids or grandkids, especially the ones that are about to go off to that next adventure, talking to your spouse or your co-worker, or your neighbor. It's about truly knowing and being known to God and to each other. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.